Ariel Wolf, a fashion magazine editor, is in her apartment in Los Angeles when she finds several missed calls from her sister Sarah. Sarah is a survivor of a birthday batch held in a private residence called the House on Haunted Hill, which used to be a psychiatric asylum known as the Vanniket Psychiatric Institute for the Criminally Insane. During the 1920s, the psychiatric asylum was run by Dr. Richard B. Vanniket. Dr. Vanniket, however, was a sadistic psychiatrist performing gruesome experiments and questionable medical procedures to his patients. This led the asylum patients to revolt against Dr. Vanniket. In the meantime, Ariel continues to avoid Sarah's calls and heads to her office. She meets with Paul, her lover who also works as a photographer in the same magazine. Just then, Ariel receives a call from her mother and is told that Sarah shot herself. Paul tries to console Ariel, who wallows in the corner, struck by grief and regret for avoiding her calls. Meanwhile, Dr. Richard Hammer, a college professor, holds a lecture about the demon Baphomet. According to him, a statuette of the demon named the Baphomet Idol was used by many cults during the Dark Ages and is said to be possessed by the demon's evil powers. The Baphomet Idol has been lost for centuries and many are trying to find it for decades as it is worth millions of dollars. Dr. Hammer himself is in search of the ancient statuette, dedicating many years in Europe to study and find it. After the lecture, Michelle, one of his student assistants, approaches Dr. Hammer, flirting with him. The two end up making out in his office, but are interrupted by Dr. Hammer's other student assistant, Kyle. Kyle informs them about the death of Sarah, who has been helping Dr. Hammer in finding the Baphomet idol. Later that day, Paul and Ariel break into Sarah's apartment in hopes of finding out what led to her alleged suicide. Ariel and Paul are stunned by the sight of newspaper clippings all over Sarah's walls. The newspaper clippings display various events from the birthday bash that happened eight years before in 1999, along with other deaths that happened in the same psychiatric asylum beforehand. Looking around, Ariel remembers how she grew distant from Sarah. Ariel thought her sister was going insane, as Sarah claimed that there were ghosts in the hill house that killed the guests at the birthday bash. At that moment, Ariel has a vision of Sarah's ghost, asking her to help them. Startled, Ariel retreats to Paul, who stares at her in confusion. As Ariel tries to explain to Paul what she saw, Dr. Hammer arrives in the apartment. He tells the pair that Sarah contacted him weeks ago. Apparently, Sarah was able to find Dr. Vanniket's journal, where it is written that the Baphomet Idol is located inside the Hill House. Sarah was supposed to come back to the Hill House with Dr. Hammer but dies before then. On the other hand, Ariel does not believe Dr. Hammer. As Paul and Ariel hurriedly leave the apartment, Dr. Hammer tells them his suspicion that Sarah did not kill herself. According to him, Sarah claimed that she was being followed by people who were interested in finding the Baphomet idol. That night, Paul drives Ariel back to her apartment. Ariel finds a package from Sarah, which contains Dr. Vanniket's journal. Just then, a group of heavily armed mercenaries barge into her apartment, holding Paul hostage. The group is led by Desmond Niles, a ruthless art dealer. Upon learning that Desmond and his group are after the Baphomet idol, Ariel realizes that it was them who killed her sister Sarah. Along with the journal, Desmond kidnaps Ariel and Paul, forcing the pair to come with them to the psychiatric asylum. Unbeknownst to them, Dr. Hammer, Kyle, and Michelle are already inside, intending to find the Baphomet idol before anybody else. In the lobby, Dr. Hammer shows Kyle and Michelle their gear called the GPR or the Ground Penetrating Radar, which allows them to locate anomalies or hollow spaces. Outside the asylum, Desmond's henchman Samuel keeps watch of Paul, while Ariel goes into the building with Desmond and his group. Soon, they find Dr. Hammer's group, and it is revealed that Desmond used to be his student. Dr. Hammer insists that the Bafflement idol should stay in the museum, but Desmond wants to sell it to a private collector. When Dr. Hammer asks him how he found out about the journal, Michelle reveals herself to be the secret lover of Desmond. As it turns out, Desmond instructed Michelle to seduce Dr. Hammer to access his research about the psychiatric asylum. Their discussion is interrupted by the sound of metal clanging. Ariel alerts everyone that the asylum is about to go into lockdown for 12 hours and that they must stop it before all of them get trapped inside. Forced to work together, both groups head to the master control room where Desmond and his men destroy the lockdown mechanism using their machine guns. Thinking that the asylum's mechanism has been disabled, the group splits up to look for the Baphomet idol. Desmond and Ariel, Michelle and Dr. Hammer, Kyle and Desmond's henchman Norris go into separate corridors. At the same time, Desmond's remaining mercenaries, Warren and Haru, each navigate around the asylum alone with the use of the GPR. Warren finds himself searching inside a small passage with knee-high water. The GPR detects a hollow space nearby, urging him to approach a wall.
He deduces that it is the Baphomet idol hidden in a hollow space, so he contacts Desmond. As Warren tries to break through the wall, a ghost suddenly appears. Before he can further react, the ghost grabs Warren, tearing his insides open and dragging him through the wall. Warren has visions of an asylum patient experiencing the same suffering, and is immediately killed. At the same time, Haru's GPR beeps, detecting a signal in an operating room. Inside, two lesbian ghosts show up and seduce Haru. Haru slowly gives in until she gets a vision of the two ghosts, who are asylum patients being tortured by Dr. Vanicut. Seeing their ghostly form, Haru rushes out of the room, but is cornered by the ghost of Dr. Vanicut. Dr. Vanicut quickly kills Haru with a scalpel, but manages to fire her gun as she falls on the ground. In the meantime, Desmond taunts Ariel as he mocks Sarah's belief in ghosts. Desmond says that he only believes in the things that he can perceive through to senses. A sound of a gunshot alerts Desmond, and he tries to connect to Warren and Haru but gets no reply. All of a sudden, Ariel is separated from Desmond as she gets locked into a cell. A male inmate ghost appears in front of Ariel, showing her visions of his painful experiences in the asylum. The male inmate ghost is revealed to be the leader of the revolt against Dr. Vanicut. Traumatized by the vision, Ariel screams and wakes up finding herself restrained in a straitjacket. While searching, Dr. Hammer confronts Michelle, expressing how hurt he is for her betrayal. Michelle says she agreed to do it because he only loves himself. The two hear Ariel's screams, rushing to look for her. Eventually, they reunite with Desmond and find Ariel binded in the cell. While Dr. Hammer frees Ariel from her binds, Ariel becomes convinced that the asylum really is haunted. She rants at Dr. Hammer, expressing her regret for not believing Sarah. Back in the lobby, Norris is tied up by ghosts. Kyle tries to help him but is pushed away, and Norris is mutilated. Overwhelmed by the sight, Kyle cries out, urging Ariel, Desmond, Michelle, and Dr. Hammer to return to the lobby. Just then, the lockdown mechanism of the asylum is reactivated. Ariel runs out of the asylum before the building is sealed off, only to find out that Paul is no longer outside. Just then, the door to the main entrance opens and a ghost invites Ariel back in. She arms herself with a gun and decides to re-enter the asylum to find Paul. Meanwhile, Samuel goes into the asylum with Paul, supposedly acting upon Desmond's orders. Upon meeting up with the rest of the group, Samuel asks Desmond why they ordered them to go inside. Confused, Desmond says he never gave him other instructions apart from staying outside. As Ariel returns, the group discusses their current situation. Ariel and Kyle try to convince Desmond that there are ghosts inside the asylum, but Desmond continues to deny it. Samuel, on the other hand, is lured by a shadow ghost in an alley. The shadow ghost captures Samuel and takes him to the ghost of Dr. Vanicut. Shortly after, Dr. Hammer, Kyle, Michelle, Desmond, and Paul's phones all ring at the same time. From the other line, they hear Samuel screaming while Dr. Vanicut tortures him to death. Kyle refuses to continue and insists on leaving the asylum, but Desmond points a gun at him. Desmond threatens everyone to keep on searching for the Baphomet idol despite the chaos. A fight ensues as Paul and Kyle stop Desmond from shooting Ariel, while Dr. Hammer disarms his lover Michelle. Desmond and Michelle are outnumbered and later subdued by the rest of the group. Ariel stares at Desmond angrily and punches him with her gun as she is reminded that it was his fault that her sister Sarah was killed. While holding them hostage, Dr. Hammer, Ariel, and Paul uncover a blueprint of the asylum to find a way out. They learn that the building has a sewer tunnel underneath, which they can use as a possible escape route. The group attempts to access the sewer tunnel through the hydrotherapy room. Just then, Dr. Hammer finds a crematorium in the blueprint, suspecting that it is where the Baphomet idol is located. Desmond provokes Dr. Hammer, reminding him of his desire to find the statuette. Dr. Hammer, on the other hand, decides to come with Ariel and Paul, who only wants to get out of the asylum. As the group heads to the hydrotherapy room, Dr. Hammer tells everyone how Dr. Vanicut is known for being a brilliant physician. He then wonders why Dr. Vanicut suddenly started butchering and torturing people. Eventually, they deduce that the Baphomet idol could have corrupted Dr. Vanicut and his staff. In the hydrotherapy room, the group comes across a huge pool of water. All of a sudden, Desmond initiates an attack on Dr. Hammer and pushes Kyle into the pool. In the midst of the commotion, Michelle steals the blueprint and runs off with Desmond. Ariel jumps into the hydrotherapy pool and manages to save Kyle from drowning. However, a number of ghosts appear in the pool moments later. Kyle and Ariel struggle to climb out of the pool while the ghosts approach them. Kyle saves Ariel from getting attacked but is later taken away by the ghosts, who were previously asylum patients who died from Dr. Vanicut's hydrotherapy procedure. 
He vanishes after being sucked into the depths of the pool, while Ariel is pulled out by Paul and Dr. Hammer through the chains. The three of them continue to walk to the sewer tunnel and discuss the ghosts. Dr. Hammer theorizes that the ghosts are all souls of the asylum patients who were trapped in the place where they died. He vows to find their way out, feeling guilty by the death of his student assistant Kyle. In another room, Desmond and Michelle resume their plan to search for the Baphomet idol. Michelle is frustrated as they are taking too much time to find the crematorium. She expresses her worries, slowly becoming convinced that something might happen to them in the building. Desmond, however, is firm that ghosts do not exist. He thinks that his henchmen are no longer answering him because they went after the statue themselves. All of a sudden, Desmond starts doubting Michelle, believing that she is part of a secret plan to turn on him. He pulls his gun out and chases Michelle. The two end up separating as Michelle hides in the building's staff room. Inside, all of the furniture slowly rises into the air, causing Michelle to panic. One by one, the furniture falls around her, until Dr. Vanicut shows up. Dr. Vanicut stares at Michelle, just as a refrigerator drops on her head and crushes her. Around the same time, Ariel Paul and Dr. Hammer arrives at the shower room. They discover a sewer grate that leads to the tunnel but are disappointed to find out that the grate is blocked by narrow bars, making it impossible for any person to fit inside. At that moment, Ariel gets another vision from the lead inmate ghost she saw earlier. The male ghost instructs her to destroy the Baphomet idol and shows her the way to the crematorium. Eventually, Ariel discovers the truth behind the ghosts in the asylum. As it turns out, Dr. Vanicut is a servant of the demon Baphomet. After obtaining the Baphomet idol, Dr. Vanicut made it the heart of the house and hid it in the crematorium. However, Dr. Vanicut became corrupted by the statuette's evil power, which led him to become a sadistic psychiatrist towards his patients. Since the statuette is possessed with the evil of the demon Baphomet, it can corrupt anyone who wants it. Moreover, it was the Baphomet idol's power that trapped all the souls in the building and forced the souls to kill everyone who entered the asylum. Thus, Ariel Paul and Dr. Hammer plan on destroying the Baphomet idol to break its control in the entire building. Ariel leads the way to the crematorium, referring to the directions she saw in the vision. After some time, they find the correct furnace, which has a chamber that leads to the Baphomet idol. The three enter the furnace, leading them to a hidden corridor. Along the way, they stumble across organic flesh, where at the top lies the Baphomet idol. Dr. Hammer, who has dedicated his life to studying the Baphomet idol, immediately becomes drawn to it, but Paul helps him get back to his senses. Using the pistol she stole from Desmond, Ariel attempts to shoot the statuette in order to destroy it. To her dismay, the gunshots have no effect in the Baphomet idol and remain unscathed. After much discussion, the trio decide to dispose of the statuette in the sewer grate to keep it away from the asylum and free the souls. Ariel then pulls the Baphomet idol out of the organic flesh, causing an uproar among the ghosts in the building. As they leave the crematorium, the three are ambushed by Desmond, pointing his gun at them. Desmond demands to take the Baphomet idol for himself, but is interrupted by two ghosts. The ghosts show Desmond a vision of themselves being locked into a furnace along with other tuberculosis patients. Desmond suffers the same death as the ghosts, and he is mercilessly burned alive. At the same time, the rest of the cremated ghosts try to attack Ariel, Paul, and Dr. Hammer. Paul trips, unable to catch up to them. He insists on staying behind, urging Ariel and Dr. Hammer to continue towards the sewer grate. Ariel runs to the shower room in a hurry to throw away the statuette for Paul. But just before she drops the Baphomet idol in the grate, Dr. Hammer becomes drawn to its power. Dr. Hammer abruptly stops Ariel, causing her to lose grip on the statuette. Under evil influence, he claims sole possession of the Baphomet idol. Ariel punches Dr. Hammer, triggering an intense fight between the two. In the ensuing chaos, Dr. Vanicut and other ghosts appear in the room. Dr. Hammer strangles Ariel and is close to suffocating her, while Ariel encourages him to resist the influence of the Baphomet idol. He manages to overcome its power enough to push her away and soon regain his senses. Ariel takes the Baphomet idol and attempts to run away, but Dr. Vanicut knocks her unconscious. Dr. Hammer attacks Dr. Vanicut, prompting him to be killed while trying to defend Ariel. Dr. Hammer shouts to call Ariel's attention until she wakes up. While Dr. Vanicut is focused on killing Dr. Hammer, Ariel drops the Baphomet idol to the grate. The statuette goes down to the sewer tunnel and flows toward the sea. In the meantime, Paul flees from the cremated ghosts who are chasing him. He runs back to the furnace and into the hidden corridor until he is cornered around the organic flesh. The ghosts surround Paul and are about to kill him, but Ariel makes it in time to dispose of the Baphomet idol. As a result, the ghosts vanish from his sight.
Back in the shower room, several other ghosts appear, along with the lead inmate ghost who helped Ariel find the statuette. They all head towards Dr. Vanicut and attack him until they all disappear into ashes, now freed. Since Dr. Vanicut is defeated, the lockdown mechanism is eventually disabled and the entire asylum becomes unsealed. Ariel stares at Dr. Hammer's lifeless body, closing his eyes before leaving the shower room. When she comes back to the lobby, she successfully reunites with Paul. The pair joyously embrace before they exit the psychiatric asylum. Paul and Ariel then take one last look at the place. Later, Ariel mentions that the Baphomet Idol has stayed in the building for years. She worries that because they threw the statuette in the sewer tunnel, they have carelessly released its evil powers. Nonetheless, Ariel and Paul exhaustingly drive away using Desmond's vehicle. Elsewhere, a young couple are spending an intimate time together on the beachside. They are about to make love when the woman feels something beneath her. The two of them dig through the sand and find the Baphomet idol. Having no idea of the statuette, the couple casually takes it with them, thinking of getting money out of it. This 2007 film is a sequel to the first part titled House on Haunted Hill. This sequel can be watched as it is, since it has very few references to its preceding film, although it may be more enjoyable to watch both if the viewer is interested in learning more about the history of the Vanicott Psychiatric Asylum. As a horror film, its horror element is fairly watchable with its makeup effects, but only for those who are not used to watching horror. Enthusiasts of the horror genre may want to skip this one. This is because the film itself heavily shows more adventure and action scenes rather than horror. For some viewers, the film may be slow-paced considering that it is relatively short compared to other films. The film could be done better, and it would be rather acceptable even if it is extended. Regardless, the plot is decent and simple. The execution of the scenes are also easy to understand.